Now that we have discussed about the rules for two triangles to be congruent or any two objects to be congruent, let's continue the session with congruency of triangles continued with more properties. Let's come out with today's introduction on CPCT. What is CPCT? Let's see the definition in brief and then the full form of CPCT would be understood more clearly. Most of the times we use this concept or this term in proving for congruency of two triangles or congruency of two objects. So let's see in brief the CPCT property connecting the congruency of two triangles. Before we just understand this, let me take two triangles, say for example, I have two triangles out here. Then clearly I see that the first triangle, let me denote by ABC and my second triangle, let me denote by DEF. Then, let me say this angle corresponds to this angle out here. Say my angle A corresponds to angle D. That means both the angles are equal. Then, let my angle B equal to angle E and my angle C equal to angle F. Then clearly I understand that the corresponding angles are equal. I do not represent saying that A equals D, B equals F and C equals E. But there is a fixed correspondence between the angles of the first triangle and the angles of the second triangle. Angle A equals angle D, angle B equals angle E, angle C equals angle F are said to be corresponding related angles as given in the problem. Now let's see how the corresponding sides are connected with the two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle DEF. As can be clearly seen, let's choose the side opposite to the first angle A. So here I have my side which connects to angle A. So the side which connects to angle A is BC. Now let's connect with the corresponding angle of A. We know that the corresponding angle of A is angle D. Therefore, the side opposite to that is EF as can be clearly seen. Therefore, the side which corresponds to angle D is EF. Similarly, let's go to angle B. For angle B, the side which corresponds is AC. Therefore, its corresponding side in the other triangle DEF is understood through the corresponding angle E for angle B. So corresponding angle of B which is E has its side opposite with DF. And lastly, my corresponding side to angle C is AB. So for angle C, my side is AB and the corresponding angle for C is angle F. Therefore, its corresponding side is DE. Now let's see all three different cases. Since angle D is the corresponding angle for A and angle E is the corresponding angle for angle B and angle F is the corresponding angle for C, therefore its corresponding sides are the corresponding sides of the two triangles. That is, when I take BC, the corresponding side of BC is EF and the corresponding side of AC is DF because for AC it's DF 
and the corresponding side of AB is DE. Therefore, the corresponding side of this AB is DE as can be clearly seen. This is how I understand the corresponding sides. So like this, if the triangles are in different positions, we can easily identify the corresponding sides and the corresponding angles or the corresponding parts. So CPCT refers to corresponding parts corresponding parts of congruent triangles C P C and T is how I expand C P C T the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are always equal is how we understand the CPCT. CPCT corresponding parts of congruent triangles always equal this is very important property by CPCT we can say the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are always equal as how I understand the CPCT connected with congruency of two triangles. For any two congruent triangles, the corresponding parts must be equal. In this case, corresponding angles and corresponding sides are always equal. Is how we understand the properties connected with CPCT. Now that we have discussed about congruency of two triangles or the congruency of two objects, with its own rules and definitions and the most important property which I have discussed in the previous session the CPCT now comes the different types of axioms which we are going to deal and study or investigate the different types of congruency of two triangles which can exist in mathematics. Investigating the congruency of two triangles with various possible properties. The first thing what I am going to come out with the congruency axiom is SAS axiom. So let's see what SAS axiom refers to. SAS axiom is what we are going to deal with. Let's see in brief. Imagine I take two triangles and prove the congruency through SAS axiom. Before we try to take into consideration the SAS axiom, let me make a note that SAS refers to side angle and side. So SAS refers to side, angle and side and this angle is between the two sides. This is how we understand SAS side angle side axiom. Importantly to note angle between the two sides which we take into consideration. So let's take the two triangles. Imagine I have a triangle a, B, C. And I have a triangle D, E, F. 
these two triangles let's see if they are congruent through SAS axiom what is SAS axiom how do we define SAS axiom in mathematics SAS axiom in respect to congruency of two triangles defines that if two sides and one included angle are equal in two triangles then the two triangles must be congruent say for example this side equals this side my AB equals ED and say for example my side AC equals my side DF is how I take the two sides one side being AB connected with ED and the other side being AC connected with DF now as we have referred that the angle is the angle chosen between two sides then clearly for these two sides this is the angle which is chosen and its corresponding angle here chosen between two sides must be this this cannot be the angle because this angle does not include these two sides angle chosen must include the two sides between two angle to get an angle so here is the angle which refers to two sides and here is the angle which is included between two sides so when these two are equal if AB equals DE the side AB equals DE next AC equals DF and angle A equals angle D let me write in order angle A equals angle D and AC equals DF then clearly I see that this refers to two sides being equal and this refers to the angles being equal and this refers to the other sides being equal to note this being the included angle that is the angle which is included between the two sides chosen or considered in the problem so here are the two sides considered so this is the included angle in triangle ABC here are the two sides chosen so this is the included angle between the two triangle between the two sides of the triangle DEF so since the sides are equal corresponding sides are equal included angles are equal and the corresponding sides again are equal therefore by SAS axiom I can say that the triangle ABC and the triangle DEF are congruent to each other is how I define SAS axiom if two sides of the two triangles are equal and their inclusive angle is also equal to each other then we say that the two triangles are congruent by SAS axiom therefore if this is this then by SAS axiom I say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF is how I define SAS axiom two triangles are congruent if the corresponding sides are equal and their included angle is equal is how I state SAS axiom two triangles are congruent if their corresponding sides are equal and their included
is how I define S A S axiom. Two triangles are congruent if their corresponding sides are equal and their included angle is equal. Side angle side property. S A S axiom defines the congruency of two triangles. That's how we understand the concept. Now that we have defined S A S axiom that two sides corresponding two sides are equal and their included angles equal then the two triangles are congruent. Let's see what if the angle is not an included angle. That is if I take SSA axiom. Let's see if this holds for congruency of two triangles. Side side angle that is I take two triangles ABC and say another is DEF. Triangle ABC and DEF. Then SSA means if the side AB equals this and my side AC equals this and one of my angle is this then I say side side and angle where angle is not included A is not inclusive angle then let's see if the congruency holds when we have a non included angle with AB equals DE and AC equals DF and angle C equals angle F which is non inclusive angle <coughs> then triangle ABC is not congruent to triangle DEF because SSA axiom doesn't hold but implies SSA axiom does not hold for congruency of triangles is how I understand that is when I take the corresponding two sides of the two triangles being equal and their non-inclusive angle being equal I cannot apply the property S A S axiom holds but S S A axiom does not hold is how we understand the property or similarly A S S axiom also does not hold for congruency of triangles as how I understand the ASS axiom does not hold for congruency of two triangles side angle side and congruency of triangles is true if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbsc syllabus